We are going to be watching this. Thanks for tuning in, guys. My name is Purge, and we are watching the first game of Season 2 of the Star Ladder. Or Star Series. Star Series? I think it's Star Series. Um, this was the tournament that burned my free time like crazy. It has started back up again, so I'm excited to be here a lot. I'm going to be here very, very often, guys, casting for you. So, um, I don't know a whole lot about the tournament quite yet, uh, other than what happened last time. Uh, it was basically... A, uh, a league format where you play a bunch of games against each other and who's ever top four ends up going to the land finals. Uh, the last one was at Kiev, it just happened not even a month ago. Uh, Navi ended up taking the win against M5 in the finals. M5 did take a one game away from Navi, but uh, Navi ended up taking, I believe, three to one in a best of five series, which was uh, really awesome. Really, really fun games to watch, so... Yeah, uh, game one here, Z Nation versus Virtus Pro. If you guys don't know who Virtus Pro is, they are a brand new team. It's basically the a uh, bunch of the players who left Dare. Uh, they had some troubles and they were unhappy with their roster, so they left Dare. Apparently, some um, uh, unhappiness with uh, uh, Art Styles picking or his decision making or something. So, Dread and S both left. Uh, Virtues are both left there. I believe actually it was a third as well. I can't remember who the third was. Santa. Also Santa. Santa also left. So Santa, Dread, and NS all left the team and joined Virtus Bro, who also has uh, Kuroki and a fifth. And I can't remember who the fifth is. Um, I can check out the roster right now. It looks like Misery is going to be standing in for them today. And he is actually a, a very talented player, of course. He used to be on... E oops, okay, that is loading. Yeah, he used to be on EG. I don't believe he is anymore. Yeah, he's no longer on EG. He got taken off of EG. I think he's a free standing right now. Uh, fourth one here is Santa, so uh, don't let this distract you guys. Urkai is uh, Santa, so it's Santa, Azen, Dread, and NS. So the three players previously from Dare, plus Azen, plus Kuroki when Kuroki is actually available. So that is Virtus Pro. Um, if you look at Z Nation guys, uh, I don't know who this magical player is, but they've been a team that they were in the last Star Series, um, Stallioner or something, I don't know, Stallioner, I guess is his name, uh, that's Team Z Nation, it's a bunch of Russians, and they were playing, um, under the Star Series, I don't know if they're in the, ser the Star Series or the Pro Series, but I believe they actually got moved up, I don't even know if Absolute Legends... I can't remember how far Absolute Legends went. I don't remember exactly how that turned out, but Z Nation was actually playing. I've casted them a couple times, and they, they're they a pretty decent team, so cool to see how this goes. But uh, we can talk about the actual Dota game now that you guys have a lot of um, heads up about the intro, about who the teams are and stuff. Uh, first ban, we saw Invoker, Panda, Leshrac, and then there was a Lycan... Um, Chen, as well as a Tyrant, our first pick went to the Dire team, actually. That was going to be a Nature's Prophet. And then we saw an Enigma Broodmother, and then we saw a Darkseer Lone Druid, and finally a Shadow Demon. So, interesting picks. Uh, I like the fact that they picked up a Darkseer here. Darkseer is a strong counter against Broodmother. Z Nation was basically accepting that they were going to get at least one counter against that Brood. Um, both Sand King and Darkseer were in the pool. Those are the two heroes that can really dominate a Broodmother in a solo situation. Um... So that's pretty good for them. They also picked up that Lone Druid. Uh, apparently Virtus Pro likes that pushing strategy. Uh, Z Nation currently does have a Shadow Demon, which is decent counter push with the um, Shadow Poison. If you can stack that up a bunch of times, it does big AoE or big nuke damage. It does do AoE, but it's not the easiest to apply. So we'll see if that ends up happening. But we're in the second round bands. We see a Slaughter now out of Virtus Pro and an Enchantress ban from Z Nation. So all of the major pushing heroes are gone. We could still see like a Shadow Shaman or something like that, but really the most popular pushing heroes right now are probably Nature's Prophet, uh, Leshrac, Enigma, Broodmother, probably those four. Um, sometimes Lone Druid gets played and Lycan is almost always banned, so we don't really see Lycan get through a whole lot of times. Alright, so, um, yeah, one more ban to come from Z Nation. We're actually going to see, interestingly, a Death Prophet from Virtus Pro banning out. We've seen a couple Death Prophet bans the last couple days, which is fun to see, because Death Prophet is actually a very strong hero. If she gets tanky and she does okay in her lane, she ends up carrying pretty hard. So, 
cool to see her shifting in. Um, also, a final ban was a Sand King. Apparently, they're scared of having a Sand King and a Darkseer possibilities, and that's pretty reasonable, actually, because Epicenter would be useful against any of those three heroes. Uh, Shadow Demon does have Disruption, but it's pretty low on cooldown, so he actually has a pretty good chance of being able to Burst Strike and Epicenter into a teamfight situation, as long as the Malathus is gone. And Virtus Pro is going to dra draft up a Beastmaster. This is a hero that their, those players like to play a lot. Santa usually was solo in bottom or solo in the hard lane for uh, for Dare, and I expect to see, I don't know if he's playing that role anymore or not, but um, might see him end up soloing the bot lane, and that's very effective. If you guys look at the mini map here, you can't see it completely, but if you're soloing the bot lane as Beastmaster, you can pick up a soul ring and you can easily just swing over to the, the secret or the um, ancient creeps and then pop your soul ring and throw the axes right when they stack, then they'll pull back towards you and you'll end up stacking those up four, five, six times or something, and eventually you can just stand there and just axe until they die, and you get a lot of experience in gold, which really increases the farm. And wow, not only are we going to see a Bane from Z Nation, which is definitely a Russian pick, uh, DTS loves that here, M5 occasionally plays him, but also going to see a Dazzle, this game, from out of Virtus Pro, which I find very interesting. Uh, I was just watching a very small portion of the E-Home game that Gods and Triumph, I believe, were casting, and they actually, there was a Dazzle in Ehome, and I was like, wow, there's actually a Dazzle in this game. Hmm, you don't see Dazzle very often. The last pick from Z Nation is going to be a Priest of the Moon, so. Priest of the Moon going to do some range semi-carry potential. Not really sure where she will lane. Possibly, they might do a Bane Mirror on a lane. It's actually pretty strong, because you can do the Nightmare and then get guaranteed arrow in. Uh, and the arrow does break invis, or break the sleep, so you basically just break the sleep with the arrow and that stuns them for a long time. Leap forward, drop that star storm, and hopefully kill people, so we'll see how this turns out. Uh, definitely interesting picks for both teams. The Dire team has slit, has better pushing, but Z Nation, a little bit better of team fight, I would say. They have Dark Seer, but on top of that, that they're pretty limited in team fight potential, so... Alright, so for Z Nation, we have uh, C Riz playing the Shadow Demon Nexus on the Mirana. We have Alba playing Bane, Sidoy playing the Broodmother, and finally the Enigma, I can't remember what his name was, I would check again, but I, I, I don't want to bother, so. Uh, for Virtus Pro, we have NS going to be playing the Dazzle, oh, we see Santa Darkseer, Misery on the Beastmaster, you guys see what's happening in Spirit, a <laughs> Silver being played by Dread and Azen on the Nature's Prophet, and this is happening, guys. That was indeed a dust, so here's the Iron Shell. Raiding team, they're not going to come for this one. Nexus might show up, but they don't know that they're in there. They use the smoke. They put the Observer Ward up. We're going to have the bear tanking things up by quite a bit. But doing the Iron Shell damage is pretty effective. Uh, stacking those up. Look at that. He's putting as many Iron Shells on different people as possible. And Roshan will take a little bit too much damage here as the tank has been completely adequate. And there's a ping, actually. It's going to see a ping. Uh, they realize what's going on finally, but here it comes. There it is. Going to get picked off, and Nexus comes in. Might be in some trouble. It's going to pop a leap, though. Takes a decent amount of damage. Beastmaster grabs the Aegis, and they all level up to level 2 as they take a nice gold advantage at the start of the game. So really, really cool here. So really awesome. Level 1 Roshan. It's going to put Lone Druid up to 2. All of their lanes are going to be slightly better here. Santa's actually going to run to the top lane. This is perfect for him, because he's going to get there. He's not even going to be late now. He's got a haste rune, so <laughs> pretty lucky for him. Uh, Observer Ward goes down for Dazzle, so that's going to stop the pull spot for the Radiant team. We'll see if Bane... no sentries, actually, so... He's not going to be able to pull here, and that's going to kind of suck, and they are doing the Bane Priest of the Moon dual lane, so... And are they really doing this tri lane? Seriously? I... this is the weirdest tri lane I have seen in a long time. Alright, so they have two babysitters on Lone Druid. I think Nature's Prophet will spend some time in the jungle. I mean, he can spawn Nature's Call. I'm really confused right now. Okay, so it's going to be a Lone Druid babysat by a Dazzle, and this way he doesn't have to play like an absolute sissy. He can pull, he can just stand up by the creep wave. He's going to have heals, they're going to have Poison Touch, and actually Poison Touch on top of a Lone Druid is really dangerous for them. And I'm going to miss first blow, which is on the top lane. It's going to be Darkseer actually getting the kill on the Brood and barely surviving to 20 HP there. Put the Sentry Wards down. And apparently just walked after the Broodmother, I guess. And, uh, yeah, okay. Sorry I missed that one, my bad. Uh, Misery's on the mid lane, gonna be soloing that Beastmaster, picking up Aura as well as Axes, and it's actually a solo Shadow Demon, which we don't always see very often, but it's gonna put some good damage in Misery. doesn't actually have a Stealth Shield here, so... He, he was the one that picked up the Aegis, so... Even if he dies here, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of weird to have an Aegis at level 1, so... 
Alright, um, there's the push continuing. Nature's Prophet is still here. He's level 3 now. Did he pick up a stat? No, he just hasn't skilled this point quite yet, but he'll probably do that soon. Uh, Dazzle as well as the Nature's Prophet going into the jungle. They might actually dive this. No, they're going to cut the creeps. Cool choice here. So what they're doing is they're spawning Treants because the Treants can tank, and then he's going to use the heal to do to heal the Treants, which will do physical damage to the opponents too. He heals three targets plus Dazzle himself, so that's going to do uh, 80 times 4, which... Mental math, 240 damage, am I correct? Uh, nope, more than that. 320. 320 damage, wow. Uh, that's a lot of damage, guys. So, 320 damage. Physical. This does do physical damage. 320 physical AoE damage to this creep wave. They can kill this very easily. And then what's going to happen is, this wave is going to push in, and either Bane or Mirana are going to have to tank it up. So, I think they're going to have a possibility to really dive on, but with such a weird strat, not only did they get Nature's Prophet, but they said, We're not going to lane him normally. We're going to do this weird Dazzle Nature's Prophet Lone Druid tri lane, which has been so weird so far. Uh, see how this goes, though. Um, I don't know what that is about, but let's look at the gold grass. So, there it is 1500 gold advantages from getting the uh, Roshan kill. So, really, really nice advantage going to them. They're getting a slight farm advantage as well. There's a little jump up from the Dark Seer kill, but there's the resume. And there we go. Shadow Wave has been used. Negos actually coming. He's going to spawn some Eidolons, puts them in kind of a bad spot here. He's going to have actually no mana for a Malphite, but uh, it's going to see a little bit of Poison Touch going down on Enigma. He might try to get this kill, but NS now running away. He's going to probably eat an arrow at this point, and the air actually lands on Nature's Prophet. Great play there by Azen. Oh my god, that was so good. And he's going to eat a couple Tangos and get out. I can't believe it. Virtus Pro is going to escape from this gank. That arrow block was amazing, seriously. Full HP Nature's Prophet dodge blocks the arrow. The Dazzle does not get hit, and then he gets the heal off shortly afterwards. I hope he doesn't die now because he made it out so far. There's the Nightmare, though. Now he's in a lot of trouble. Arrow in about two seconds, and I don't think he's going to be able to save himself this time. There's one Tango looking for the Malphus, but it does get blocked, and he's going to juke. The arrow comes through, dodges that as well. NS is getting out of here, but he's completely surrounded. A couple more ranged attacks. And he is down to 100 HP. There's the one Malphys. There's the heal that's going to keep him alive. And NS has an epic escape here. Such great play by Virtus Pro. Starting off the game with this crazy tri lane. But awesome individual skill coming out. Every single player in Virtus Pro there made the right choices. NS escaping through the trees in the first place. That was awesome. I can't believe that just happened. At the start of the game, too. Man. Alright, and there we go. Once again, Darkseer on the top lane doing a ton of damage to Cedar here. Look at that, just absolutely running. He's going to grab some spiders as well. He's like, oh, free spiders, I'll take those. And that's the problem with Broodmother. Not very good against a Darkseer, so... Z Nation really getting themselves counterpicked there. Man, that was crazy on the bot lane. That was such great escapes by those guys. Even against a Nightmare, too. Nightmare puts things in such weird uh, situations. It's like, oh, they can just disable me for four seconds and there's nothing I can really do about it. It's so scary usually, so. Uh, Dazzle does pick up a magic stick though. Uh, he's currently level three. We'll see what he picks up next. Might be a grave. Most likely will be, I think. But it could be a couple different things. He's trying to get some last hits here. Uh, maybe That's pick up some boots right. or something like that. But Dread is going to pick up boots himself. Basilius plus boots up. And now are they, they are going to pressure forward. So, still a Mirana, Bane dueling, uh, Nature's Prophet has actually left, uh, I don't know where he is at. He's actually in base, picking up boots himself, I don't know if he did a gank or something, but a couple axes going to do some good damage to the Shadow Demon here. And here comes the TP to the bot lane, they are going to cut the creeps once again, Azen comes through, spawns a couple Treants, looking to right click, he's going to go on top of Bane and trying to bring in the, oh there's the heal, great plays there, spawns the Treants, gets close in, and then we see the Shadow Wave used offensively to do a ton of damage there. Such a cool strat with the Dazzle here, really leveraging his Shadow Wave to be super effective. I mean we see this sometimes with some a hero like Bro uh, Broodmother actually, because you can spawn units that end up allowing for more Shadow Waves, but thus far they, they're just using using a Nature's Prophet to do it. It's a really, really cool strat here. And the last it goes to Lone Druid, picking up the extra gold. So, very cool so far. Here comes Beastmaster actually coming for a gank. He's going to spot Enigma, but he wants some other blood. It looks like he wants to pick off Nexus, and we're looking for the Roar. There's the Roar, 150 damage, couple right clicks, easy kill. Great gank from Misery, just absolutely didn't care about the Enigma. He wanted to shut down the Priest of Moon, and that's their carry, their, their most dangerous carry potential. So, if they can just make it to late game and continue to shut down Priest of the Moon, she's going to have a Wand Circlet Boots, and that's it. So, Virtus Pro is pushing forward now. 
continuing to see the heals, still only a level 1 Shadow Wave, probably will get another Poison Touch, because Poison Touch gets so much better at level 3. It's more or less at max effectiveness, at least in terms of the slow it is. And here's the push coming through, so level 5 up, so Spirit Bear does have Entangle, but no Demolish, so that means he won't be able to do bonus damage towers, but if you can get a random Entangle off on one of these guys, look at this, look at the damage that's about to be done here. On top of this Bane, he just took about 230 damage, not bad at all, as the rest of Virtuous Pro is just sitting back hitting the tower, and such an interesting pushing strat, way different than the typical Leshrac that we've been seeing a lot lately. But there they go, hitting the tower pretty hard. Looks like Shadow Demon's coming. He's going to disrupt on the Dazzles. The arrow's actually going to be too early here. NS going to look for the Poison Touch. He does slow down Shadow Demon. But are they going to get more follow-up? He's going to get one trees, two trees. There's the Entangle. This looks terrible for Shadow Demon. And the Shadow Wave. And they pick off the kill. Virtus Pro getting a kill on the bottom. As Beastmaster grabbing a Invis top mic. Try to kill this Enigma in five seconds. He will have the Roar in a second. He doesn't have vision of this. And here it comes, there's one hit, two hits, looking for the Roar, there's the Malphys being used, the Roar comes down, the final Malphys, here comes the Urn, the spawn, so the slow will be applied, and there's the Axes, and he is getting at the kill, great play by Misery, he did that absolutely perfectly, guys, that was amazing, uh, two hits, then the Roar, then the Quill Bore, and it looks like Alba is also in a ton of trouble, while the Shadow Poison, once again, doing a ton of damage, as he does actually Nightmare himself, Disruption as well going out, but an Entangle on top of the Shadow Demon, one hit, two hits on Alba, Alba goes down as Virtus Pro continues their push on the bot lane, Shadow Poison going down on the Shadow Demon, and Nexus leaps past as there's a couple more right clicks, and Shadow Demon in a lot of trouble, takes some hits, he's trying to bottle through this, and he might be able to, but the Poison Touch is disabling his bottle, he does get out though, Malphus now an NS, and NS another Entangle on top of an Enigma, this bear's been auto-attacking like crazy, and the Shadow Wave almost getting a kill, again, another disruption. But the push is continuing. Priest of Moon coming down. And finally, Versus Pro is going to lose a hero. It's going to be Azen that gets picked off. That's the first death of the game for Versus Pro. And they've already taken a Tier 2 tower. And we're pressuring Rax at 7 minutes. I can't believe it. This game has been ridiculous so far. Holy crap. Alright, let's look at some important stats. It's... F oh, God. <laughs> 5k gold advantage at 7 minutes. That's scary ridiculous that is a roshan that is a two tower lead and six kills well five kills technically now but another important thing to remember guys this is going to be up in not even a minute or two not even a minute or two let's look at the exp graph especially 3k advantage the gold graph is more severe at this point but I, either way very very healthy advantage up now Santa's got a Ring of Health and the Stout Shield. He is going to be getting ganked by the Enigma. And here comes the Surge. He does use Surge on himself, but the second Malefit's coming through. And the Black Hole is well being used on Santa, but he's actually just tanking up the damage. He's going to have a Surge in about three seconds. There's the Vacuum, almost killing the Enigma. Enigma taking a little bit of damage, but he's going to end up surviving as we see the Surge from Santa just to stay alive. He got killed. Oh my god, the Mega... Cre the Creep came through with the Iron Shell and picks off the kill. So despite getting ganked there, he picks off the kill. Looks like we saw Shadow Demon in the top room get killed. And also now Alba in a lot of trouble. There's the level 3 Shadow Poison. The Axes come through. Arrow does land on NS, but they are absolutely dominating this game. 9-1 to one right now. The Spirit Bear up with Boots and a Quelling Blade, actually. Interesting choice. Quelling Blade up on the Spirit Bear. They just want lots of early potential. I don't even think they care that much about the relic honestly I mean he's that he's about halfway there anyways so man this is crazy misery looking for Rorby is about 30 seconds away so he's gonna have phase boots but that doesn't matter he's looking to try to maybe get within range of call of the wild but bam actually picks off the spirit bear so nice play there by Mirana she can go back and heal up do we have a respawn yep eight seconds he'll have that up so very cool strat so far especially uh Lone Druid picked up the fast Bastilia so they can give armor to their creeps and their bear and all that other good stuff not to mention the mana region of course but now it looks like some ganking coming Dazzle at Arcane Boots actually picked up a second Shallow Grave this early. Very interesting, but the range can be a limiter for this skill. That's the main problem with it, is that oftentimes you have to get so close to the enemies. We're going to see a Nightmare actually on Dazzle. It's going to take a little bit of damage as we see Aurora actually going down on top of Shadow Demon. Axes in a second, but might hit two heroes. There's the uh, Urn coming through. Axes do land on two as Misery's going to run past. There's the TP coming out, but the right click is too much. Misery's still alive here, but now he's in a lot of trouble and he is going to get picked off. Yeah, he does get killed to a Shadow Poison. As we see a Vacuum going down, Arrow lands on top of Darks here as Nexus trying to do some damage. Great Grave on the Dazzle, keeping him alive just in time. As he's going to try to continue helping out. Uh, Azen actually canceling a TP there. Slight mistake being done. But either way, still great play from Virtuous Pro so far. 10 to 2 Curly Nature's Prophet going to pop his ulti to do the damage up. And Breedmother on the top with a Boots and a Soul Ring. That's actually a Treads, but... Uh, Vanguard Soul Ring on Darkster, so he is absolutely fine here. Going to use a little bit of an Iron Shell on one of the 
Uh, Spiders actually, which does a ton of damage there. This is a Surge as well. He's going to pop the ulti. The ulti does remove Surge, so he might be in some trouble here, but he does have that Vanguard up, so he's blocking a lot of damage. As Surge is three seconds away, there's the TP support that spawns Spiderlings. He gets picked off. Grave was a four second cooldown there. Tough loss. And NS just a little bit too late to show up and help out for that as we see Shadow Demon retreat and go back to base. So, great gank there with the Shadow Demon. Luckily, the Demonic Purge does remove buffs, so he could take off the Surge. Alright, there's the uh, Disable on Lone Drew, a little bit of Malefice here. Only two charges there. A couple hits back and 2300 gold on him right now. He's got three levels of Synergy. He's going to pick up the True Form. I think it's time for him to transform, actually, because he's kind of in a deep spot. Uh, he'll probably wait for this Tango to run out and then transform. Uh, that would give him the most HP here. And there's actually the gank coming in. There's a Nightmare. Now he's in a lot of trouble here. Nice. He uses the Nightmare to disable him. And there's transforming and stops the stun anyways because he did transform. He's got about 700 HP. He's going to have to pop his Rory. He's actually going to try to get a kill here as he is trying to escape. He needs some Entangles to be in a uh, safe place because he's got a Brain Sap coming up in just a second there. And there's another Nightmare. So this looks kind of scary. And yeah, the Brain, brain Sap will come down as we see the Entangle. Malefus goes down. Might be able... No, not able to do so. Enigma is going to make it out. Great gank. And Virtus Pro possibly being a little too aggressive there. Look at that. Roshan has respawned. They could have seen Lone Druid back off and go straight for this because I don't think the Radiant Team Z Nation could really fight this out. The Gold Graph has stayed pretty flat though, so Z Nation been doing a good job of slowing down the push after this fact. But a Poison Touch now maxed out. Really, really low cooldown on that. It's totally spammable. And I love the Medallion pickup on Beastmaster. Minus 6 armor to do the damage to Roshan, and they don't even need a Silver to tank up anymore. Nor the Darkseer to do the damage. So the arrow's going to come through. It's actually going to miss everybody here. And they are going to take out the Roshan. Dire tried to snag it, but didn't. Our Ready Team tried to snag it, but they did not. Beastmaster grabs the Aegis again. Now level 10. So let's check the EXP advantage once again. Uh, still about a 4k advantage. Stacking up some Shadow Poison here, but not a huge deal. Misery's going to take a decent amount of damage from this, about uh, 300 damage or so, but... Uh, then Santa doing some pulling on the top lane, but still very survivable. Top tower is barely taking any damage at all from that uh, Broodmother, so... Still looking pretty good. Don't know if the Radiant Team has vision of the invisibility or not. We'll see if he pops that. He might get into a position. If he roars on either one of these heroes, could have follow-up. Actually, a Tranquil boots up on Enigma. Very interesting, but... Uh, more movement speed. A little bit of regen as well helps you counteract the soul ring regen problem, but kind of interesting that he went for that anyways, because usually we just see a mech or a pipe or something on Enigma, which covers that hole. So, not quite sure. Darks are actually going to run away from his top lane, might be coming mid it looks like, and the spider's doing some good work in the jungle. He's going to find these actually. He's going to be really lucky about this, and I don't even think he realized there's the vacuum, and here comes the AoE damage, picking up some good EXP, puts him up to level 11. As Virtus Pro is pressuring on the tier 2 or the tier 1 tower, Beastmaster invisible in position, looking for his roar possibility, and it's going to go on the Shadow Demon. Here comes, there's the roar, there's the poison touch, the Nature's Prophet popping the ulti. Black Hole is used, actually does catch three heroes pretty good, but the vacuum putting them together a little bit as Azen almost gets picked off here. There's the Fiend's grip by Elba, and the poison touch removes that as well as the surge. Ulti is well on Misery, and he's in a lot of trouble, but he does have the Aegis. He's going to die, but he'll be back in just a second here as the Iron Shield does some good damage. And that's going to back off a little worried. As we see the Eidolons in some trouble, perhaps. Great axes on three heroes, and we see a silence on NS and the Brain Sap. And the Great Grave is actually going to keep it alive for a couple more. Uh, he's going to have to pop a wand in three seconds. Here comes the Shadow Poison and the wand. Well, the wand. Oh, he forgot to pop the wand. Six charge wand. Could have survived there. But unfortunately, he forgot about it. There's a Star Storm on AZ. He's going to sprout, keep him within tower range, and gets the kill. Great play by AZ. Oh, that was close. Dark Seer uh, also helping out killing. I know that was an assist on the Mirana, who's already dead, anyways. but... Great play by Azen, but unfortunately NS forgot to pop the wand. Everybody forgets, guys. You get stressed out. You're like, oh, my heal's on cooldown. I can't grave either. And you simply forget. Darkseer's going to back off, though. Heal and back up. Wants to deny this tower here. We're looking for the last hit, and the Radiant Team does get a no deny from Santa. So, good play by the Broodmother. But mid tower as well, so actually going to get denied. So, tower will get killed, and there's the right click, so... Z Nation does deny the mid tower, but uh, luckily for the Dire Team, this gives them a little bit more map control either way. And they're still winning 14 to f or 14 to 5, but oh, we're going to see a Malefus on top of Santa as we see Nature's Prophet teeping and trying to save him here. Looking for the Sprout. There's the Vacuum. There's the Dust as well, actually. And he's going to Sprout in on the Enigma. Might be able to get the kill as we see the Surge from Santa. Nature's Prophet ulti and spawn Spiderlings in two seconds. Won't get it. Nature's Prophet kills Enigma, of course. And a great save, actually. Santa completely ends up surviving here. As NS shows up, level 9 currently with the Weave. 
It's a big AoE on this ulti, that's for sure. Looking for the Poison Touch, which actually does land. He did not leap that at the right time. But the Axes are going to clear the creep wave. Triots will be spawned and going to try to take the tier 1 tower, which they will be good at. Misery is going to pop the roar, actually, on the Mirana as we see an Iron Shell's Quizzle. Some good damage. Vacuum actually being a mistake there. Messing that up just a little bit as the damage comes through to Dark. So he gets picked off. No grave from Dazzle because he was disabled. And now changing targets on Shadow Demon. There's the Poison Touch as well as Medallion doing some good damage. He pops the Shadow Poison and that's going to be it. Shadow Demon goes down. NS now very, very low HP but still has a grave ready to go. HP might, he might actually die to Poison Touch. Ooh, no, he's going to survive with about 70 HP. As we see a Malphite on top of Aze, he's going to try to grave this one if possible. There's the heal. He's going to try to TP out and he is inside the Sprout. He makes it. Axes on two. Virtus Pro going to back off. Such a high action game. Look at this. We have... 23 kills and 16 minutes. That's more than one kill a minute. We've had two Roshans as well. Crazy action so far. And Dread on the bot lane. With the Relic up on the Spirit Bear. So he is so close to his Radiance. Only 16 minutes in. And they are so heavily farmed this game. And he's going to continue jungling just a little bit. He's very, very good at jungling, I might add. Uh, but lots of armor going on the Spirit Bear from the Basilisk. He's got a Quilling Blade and a Stealth Shield. This is like a lot more gold than we normally see spent on a Spirit Bear in the early game. But the Quilling Blade does has, have uses. I mean, you cut one tree and then you save the time from having to walk all the way around going from camp to camp. And that saves you about 5 or 10 seconds in the scope of the game. Increases your farm by just a little bit. Very good stuff. And here comes the gank on the Priest of Moon. There's the Roar Urn as well. Nature's Prophet ulti and the Axes. And Nexus actually might be able to leap out of this in the... Medallion also being used, but there's the Brain Sap as well as the Nightmare. Looks like Verona will survive his Demonic Purge and Air on top of Misery, and he's a little too overly aggressive for this one. He does get picked off. Z Nation was ready to go for that one. Actually, we see Nature's Prophet kill the Mirana, but he's going to pay for this one, I think. We have a Malphus. There's a Black Hole. At least he's going to sprout himself looking for the TP, but yeah, they had Vision from Shadow Poison, so not necessarily worth it. It's hard to say. They killed the Priest of the Moon. That's their only carry potential. 17 minutes in, and this is all she has, which is absolute crap. But they did feed them some EXP. I don't know. Um, Nature's Prophet actually going for a Orchid. Cool item choice. I've talked about this, uh, I think, with Wagamom in the, in, or somebody else in another game. But it's actually a very, very inexpensive way to increase your damage and give you unlimited mana as well as some nice utility. So uh, definitely useful against a couple of these heroes. Bane uh, it can stop Enigma's Black Hole. It's another really good use. Lots of cool stuff like that. Z Nation definitely... On the back foot, though, and we'll see how's the Radiance coming along. About a 100 gold away. And there they go. So it is an 18-minute Radiance. Somebody just wrote that in chat, but you called it 18-minute Radiance officially. So now the pushing is probably going to be very, very serious from the Dire team. And the best part is that they have a Dazzle, so they have pretty good support structures in their team fights. That means as they push forward, they can keep the heroes alive. They can try to keep the bear alive. They have Weave as well. Wow, actually, he's totally maxing Grave out pretty early here. Very interesting choice. Um, Shadow Wave obviously heals less targets at lower levels, but the cool part is that Grave can reduce mana cost onto 110. The range is very, very far, which means he's more likely to Grave the right targets. And the cooldown goes down to 15 seconds, which means you can actually Grave multiple people in a teamfight, which you don't normally get the opportunity to do, which is a really cool strat here. Makes me jealous of this Dazzle. I love playing Dazzle myself, so... Uh, no, actually, there's a gank coming in on Broodmother. He's going to get silenced here. Looking for the vacuum, actually. The vacuum is used as well as the Iron Shell doing some good damage, but he is going to make it out. Uh, do they have a Dust, actually? Uh, dust has not been used. And there's a TPI. He's going to try to make it. He does get out just in time. Great play. Uh, Intreds might have made the difference. Slight nitpick there. Uh, Shadow Demon now pushing forward. And now he's going to disrupt on an Illusion there. And is he going to ulti as well? The arrow lands, and the weave is actually going to be used here. As we see a slow at Enigma, there's the roar as well. Going on top of him, he's got lots of minus armor right now. Look at that damage being done. He does get nightmared by his allies, but it doesn't matter. He was taking so much damage over time, that doesn't make a big difference. It's actually going to be a Radiance up on Dread instead, so the lone Druid's going to pick that up. Uh, no, he transferred it back, so Radiance back on the bear. We'll be able to do that Radiance, but not to mention the huge damage being done to Towers with that Demolish. NS actually taking a ton of hits, eats another poison as well. Has to be very, very careful right now. He's literally the only heal to his teammates, I think. We still don't have... Uh, Lundry destroys the tower. Still don't have a headdress, which I think is on the way, but not quite there yet. And they're going to take the bot, uh, top tier 2 tower now. Another gank coming in on Cedo. He's going to pop the BKB, actually, so he is going to be fine for a little bit. Pops his ulti as well. Wants to kill NS. NS is going to grave already. Ends up surviving. Has to worry about the poison. Actually, oh, there's going to be a courier coming to the secret shop. I don't know if they spotted this or not, but the team fight continues trying to pick off Seedoy with the Radiance. Burn damage looking for Enigma Black Hole, but he gets entangled and picked off under the 
Wall of Replica, now Alba as well, trying to run away. Brain Sap is used, but I don't think it's going to matter. Misery is so fast this game with those phase boots. Axes come through, pick off the kill, and the Courier makes it out. Creep Wave will be cleared, and Virtus Pro going to take the last outer tower from Z Nation. They are playing so great here, 22 to 8. Urn is up, healing up NS. Who's got that urn? Oh, that's Beastmaster, of course. Very, very important to have an urn, guys, if you're trying to do this early aggression. The heal that it provides is absolutely invaluable. Otherwise, Dazzle will be 400 HP lower, and you'd have to use a lot more mana on his heal. So, level 2 Weave is ready. He's going to use a little bit of Medallion on the Broodmother to scare him back just a slight amount. As they continue to range attack, uh, there is... What did he purchase? Um, Hyperstone, actually, on the Baron. Now he's going to right-click on top of Enigma. Enigma in a bad spot. There's the Vacuum as well. Put him in a bad spot. He accidentally roars a creep there. Huge mistake from Misery. Slight mistake. And we're going to see the bear get picked off. Ends up using his ulti on that one, but he resummons. So the bear is back up. Another poison touch on top of Bane as we see the weave go down. Minus armor on everybody here. Looking for a couple more follow-ups. Z Nation, Cedoy pops in. Pops his ulti. Trying to use the life steal off of Misery. is very tanky. Brain Sap is using the shadow wave. Gets the kill. Great play by Virtuous Pro. Continuing this aggression. 20 minutes in. And we see good game called from, Virt from uh, Z Nation. Such an excellent game from Virtuous Pro. Very cool strat that I have not seen before. Dazzle plus Nature's Prophet. Arrow's going to land on Misery, but he's probably fine. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> it's going to take a bunch of damage. Star Storm landing twice, so great play by Nexus. But either way, that is the Raxes. We are going to see some disconnects from the Radiant team, and that is it. Such a beautiful strat. That was really cool. Lone Druid, Dazzle, Nature's Prophet, Aggressive Tri-Lane. So weird. But really effective against the dual lane. Um, they, they had so much heal. They had Grave up. Poison touch as well being useful. And the mech is finished on Dazzle. So he didn't even max out the Shadow Wave. Was literally going to probably do Grave second, I guess. But really cool. Awesome strat here out of them. Radiant team will be disconnecting in a second. Uh, Mirana is actually still in the game. So we're going to have to wait to see this. But... That is okay. Once again, guys, this was game one of Star Series. So, Star Series Season 2 starting back up again. So, I'm going to be casting like crazy here. Uh, we're going to have the Ghost Huli coming up in a second. Uh, it should be starting in about 18 minutes or so. It's going to be M5 versus uh, DTS, which is going to be a huge match, actually. Those are both Ukrainian, well, Russian Ukrainian, but some of them used to play with one another. So, we'll be, it's kind of, they're kind of rival. It's kind of a, a little bit of a rivalry there between those two teams. So, and we're going to disconnect Suicide so at the end of the game. In just a second here. Um, was he going for an AC? Yeah, it was. Cool. With one ring of regeneration. Just a little bit of regen. <laughs> Slapping all over here. Alright, so. Um, thanks again for tuning in, guys. If you want to see more from me, go check me out on my website, purgegamers.com, or go check out ghostygamers.net for any of your esports coverage. I'm sure you can look at rosters and other cool information from both these teams. There's got to be a news up about Star Series Season 2, I'm sure. And any second in here. And there it is. So let's look at some stats. 7, 2, and 14. Nature's Prophet. Azen played so effectively. 5, 12 gold per minute. 5, 51 on the Lone Druid. Even Dazzle did very well. Um, really taking apart Z Nation there. Z Nation, not a bad team by any means. I think they beat Absolute Legends even. So, But Virtuous Pro really showed a lot of individual skill there. And such epic games. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back in just a second with some uh, Ghostly League. So stay tuned.